Hey everyone, I'm Joe Brady, and we're here today to explore something really exciting for Sony shooters. Ellen Chrome's new EL Skyport HS system with a capability called High Sync. The High Sync system allows you to shoot studio and portable strobes with shutter speeds up to 1 8,000th of a second. Now you might be thinking, well, I can do that with high speed sync on my speed lights. And while this is true, High Sync offers some distinct advantages over high speed sync speed light functions, and we're going to see how in a moment. Oh, and by the way, this system is also available for you Canon and Nikon shooters, so the concepts we'll cover apply to these cameras as well. So what's the big deal about shooting with high shutter speeds? Well, there are two primary benefits that this capability provides. One's kind of obvious. You can stop motion or action without blur, and you can do it with the flashes much further away than high speed sync can achieve. Number two, you can use wide apertures in bright lighting conditions or even overpower the sun or make bright skies darker, again with the lights much further away from the subject than high speed sync can do. Today we're going to focus on the benefits of using high sync to allow the use of wide apertures to create a shallow depth of field in portraits in any lighting condition. Now before we start shooting, let's do a quick overview of what high sync is. What High Sync does is it times the flash pulse to the shutter on your camera. That's different than High Speed Sync on a speed light. In High Speed Sync on a speed light, it turns your speed light into a little strobe. It just fires it thousands of times a second in order to fill the high speed of the shutter. What High Sync does is it times the pulse of the flash to be on during the entire time that the shutter is moving across the sensor. That allows you to get a lot more power than High Speed Sync, you can also place your lights much greater distance from the subject. That allows you to get full length shots and not have to worry about having your lights in the scene. Also, high sync does not work in TTL. There's no limitations of TTL and the limitations of just having a couple of stops up and down for exposure compensation. So let's get started and put the Ellen Chrome EL system to work. Now setting up the system for Sony cameras is remarkably simple. You just set the EL Skyport Plus HS to its HS function, and then you set your lights if they need it to HS. The lights we used in the studio are the Ellen Chrome D-Light 400s. For them, they are completely automatic. You don't have to do anything other than set HS on the controller, and then you're just ready to fire away. It's really that simple. If you want to take advantage of the rest of the Skyport's functions, you can set each light to a different group so that you can turn them on and off and adjust power settings individually right from the controller on the camera. This is really handy when your lights aren't right next to you, particularly if you have one up high. We'll look at this closer when we do a studio shoot later. We're going to do two different types of sessions today, one outdoors in the bright sun and one in a more studio-like situation. We'll put the Ellen Chrome High Sync system to the test and explore the capabilities of my Sony lens combination with an f1.4 aperture and use Ellen Chrome flashes, which will allow us to sync with shutter speeds up to 1 8,000th of a second. So let's see what we can accomplish with wide apertures and the EL Skyport Plus HS on my Sony a7R II. Now today, I'm using the new Sony G Master 85mm f1.4 lens for these portraits, so I'm going to take advantage of that 1.4 aperture. Now out on location, we're using Ellen Chrome ELB lights. This is a battery-powered kit, and it can power two separate lights. So here we can see the small head. This is all there is for the head because all of the power is taking place in this power pack. And one of the advantages of having the power in the pack is that that small head weighs very little and makes it very easy to move around or even have someone just hold it for you. We're using the new EL Skyport HS for Sony cameras to take advantage of the high sync in this controller. This controller is native to Sony's new cameras and the multi-interface hot shoe. You simply slide it on, lock it in place, and put it to use. If you wish to delve more deeply and fine tune the timing of your shutter to the flash, Ellen Chrome's ODS, or Overdrive Sync, allows you to adjust the firing time of the flash to your shutter. Now, this capability allows you to squeeze the absolute most power possible with your specific camera and light combination. Now there's a bit of testing to find the best setting. I found that my camera benefited from a 0.2 millisecond delay. You can try this by setting the delay at a higher number, say two milliseconds. And when you take a test shot, you're probably gonna see a darkened area where the shutter movement was not open during the flash. Keep backing off the delay until the shadow of the shutter disappears. 
Here we are with Cadence on the Hudson River and we've got the new Tappan Zee Bridge being built right behind us. And while it's kind of interesting, it's quite the distraction if you're trying to do a portrait. And we chose this spot to illustrate how having a wide open depth of field can make that not be a distraction because it's going to be so blurred you're not even going to really know where it is. If you have too much depth of field and that thing starts to become noticeable, rather than focusing on our subject, you end up forcing yourself to look over there. You, know, you just can't help it. You're wondering, what is this thing behind? However, in order to shoot at 1.4, which is what I'm doing, you have to have a really fast shutter speed. Now, I can do that with no flash, but with the way the sun is, Cadence's eyes end up being completely in shadow or faces partly in shadow. It's just not attractive. We need light. So, in order to maintain the 1.4, get light on her face, yet have that go blurry behind us, we need to have lights and we need to be able to shoot them at 1 4,000th, 6,000th, even 1 8,000th of a second, which is what I found out to be best. So, 1 8,000th of a second, f1.4 on the lens, I've got the light right over here. And what another beauty thing, by the way, these uh, Ellen Chrome ELB lights that we're using allow us to have the light pretty far away. We're about, what would you say, about 10 feet away or so? We're about, to, the light's about 10 feet away from Kay. And the beauty of that is it allows me movement. I can frame her differently and not have to worry about the light. If you tried to use high speed sync with the standard speed light, you wouldn't be able to be this far away because it just doesn't have enough power. This light has plenty of power. I could even put it 15, 20 feet away and still get enough light on her to open up the shadows on her face, yet keep my 1-4 to keep that distracting background out of focus. You ready to go? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. You might wonder why would you want to use high shutter speeds in a studio setting? There are actually a couple of times where it could be a great benefit particularly if you're using a textured or perhaps an unattractive or maybe a wrinkled background. One of the great benefits of studio lights is having the ability to create gentle transitions of light from light to dark using light shapers like a big softbox or a big octa, which is right next to me. Now to get those smooth gradations, you need to have your subject close to the lights. One problem that happens is that when you're this close to the subject, it's impossible to have the light at a low enough power to allow wide open apertures on this lens. Now, since we want to keep our light source close to the subject to provide those smooth transitions from light to dark, we need to adjust the duration of the flash because we need to keep it close. However, at standard sync speeds, again, generally maxing out at 1 250th of a second, you can't get the flash intensity low enough to use those wide open apertures. Beside creating a beautiful soft transition from focus to a soft blur, using a wide aperture can create enough blur on your background to eliminate distracting details that can take away from the beauty of your subject. This allows you to shoot practically anywhere and still create great looks. Now, since the high sync system uses just a part of the flash output, you can further decrease the amount of light coming into the camera with shutter speed. Just like when shooting outside in the sun, by using a fast shutter speed in the studio, we can cut down the amount of light and get both a wide aperture for that lovely depth of field and have our light shapers close to the subject for those smooth light transitions. By the way, another benefit of the EL Skyport is that we can change the relative power of each of our lights right from the top of the camera. Each light shows right up on top of the LCD screen, so you simply choose the light, dial the power up and down as needed. There's no walking around the set, no climbing up to adjust hair lights, no disruption of the flow of the shoot. Also, the lights we're using all have their receivers built into the lights. And our favorite light for shooting in the studio was the D-Light RX4 because it has a flash duration that is just ideal for high sync shooting. We've seen today that the Ellen Chrome EL Skyport Plus HS system for Sony cameras opens up completely new possibilities with Studio Flash. 
From the D-Lite to Ghost Set to the ultra portable Allen Chrome ELB, you were able to achieve great shots that wouldn't be easily achievable any other way. And as I mentioned, since these lights have built-in receivers for the Skyport transmitter, just put the unit on your camera, set it up for high sync, and start shooting. You've seen the results. If this is the type of shooting that you're interested in, Sony shooters now have these amazing capabilities at their disposal. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Hope to see you online again soon. Until then, keep shooting. Bye-bye.